Let us pray for inspiration, spirit. Holy Spirit, breath of God, source of our life. We open ourselves to you, to the enlightenment that you bring, the inspiration that you bring. Help us to hear today what message you have for us. Amen. Steve and I once had a cat named Charmin. Charmin. What a sweet name. Well, Charmin used to keep me awake at night by hopping on and off the bed, on and off, on and off. And when she was on the bed, she would stretch her little seven-pound body out to about three feet in length, and she'd become expando cat. And we'd be like this on the bed, and Charmin would be like that. So finally, I decided I was going to start putting Charmin in my office upstairs at night. And that's what I did. And, and she loved it. There was a big bed up there for her to stretch out on, bookshelves to climb on, windows to look out, food and water, and a litter box for her convenience. It was perfectly safe and perfectly comfortable. But every night, when I opened the door leading to my office upstairs, Charmin would gaze up the steps as though she had never seen that place in her entire life. As though she had complete amnesia. As though if she could talk, she would say, what is that place up there? I better not climb those steps because who knows what I'll find. Charmin, Charmin's nightly amnesia is a perfect metaphor for our spiritual amnesia. We so often forget the places we've been, spiritually speaking, the things we've gotten through because of our inner resources. I know that's true for me. Almost every week before I write a sermon, I worry that I'm not going to be able to do it. Will I be able to do this? Can I do it? Even though I have written the sermon practically every week for the past 11 years. And I've shared with you, whenever I fly, my anxiety comes to the surface as though this is the very first flight I've ever taken. As though I haven't flown and survived hundreds and hundreds of flights ever since my very first flight when I was 14 years old in a little Cessna above my hometown of Topeka, long before I ever started worrying about flying. We especially have amnesia about the difficult places we've been and grown through because of our inner resources. The seasons of depression that we have gone through, that have come and gone yielding new hope every time about the conflicts we've had with family members or friends or church members and that we not only got through but made us stronger about the difficult decisions that we've made and have learned from no matter how they turned out. Over and over, we forget what we've done the way that Charmin forgot what she did every night gazing up those stairs. We we have to remember what we are capable of, spiritually speaking. And that is an important theme of Jesus' in the Gospel of John. Over and over in the Gospel of John, Jesus says in so many words, remember the spiritual power within you. And he compares it to living water that rushes up within us and nourishes us and refreshes us just when we think we can't take another step. And he compares it to eternal life rising within us just when we're ready to give in to the darkness of despair. And he compares it to something else. He compares it to light within us shines brightly just, just when we are ready to stop shining, just again when we're ready to give in to darkness of despair. 
As a spiritual teacher, Jesus did his very best to help his disciples remember what they were capable of. He did his very best to do that, to help them remember what he was so good at remembering and living from. And in today's scene from the Gospel of John, Jesus reassures his disciples that when he's no longer with them to remind them of their spiritual power, to remind them what they're capable of, that God will send the Holy Spirit to remind them. The very presence of God within them will remind them this Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to say that God sends the Holy Spirit? What does it mean? My nephew Andrew, he's 13 years old, very charming and very precocious, once said to me, well, God sent Jesus first, and then God sent the Holy Spirit. Who's God going to send next? Good question. I told him, you, Andrew. (laughs) To say that God sends Jesus or that God sends the Holy Spirit is to say that they come from God. They are of God. Just as we come from God, we are of God. God's presence is within us. God's very spirit is within us. And when we recognize that and live from that, it's as though it's as though we're awakened. It's as though God sends the Holy Spirit from heaven for the very first time to us. So what makes us forget this power of God within us, the presence of God within us? Why do we end up like Charmin, gazing up the stairs, wondering where they lead, not realizing we've gone up those stairs many times? What, what makes us forget? Well, Jesus suggests in today's gospel scene that the ways of the world cloud our thinking and disturb our inner peace. The ways of the world. For example, the world obsesses about security, having enough money, having enough possessions, having enough safety. And we worry about all those things, and we hold on to those things, sometimes in desperation. The world obsesses about image, about being accepted, about being valued by others. And so we become people pleasers, and we try to prove our worth in the world. The world obsesses about having external power rather than enjoying our inner power. External power really means controlling people and situations. And so we put a lot of energy into trying to exert our will over people and situations to make them all conform to what we want. (laughs) All of these obsessions of the world come from fear. Fear that we won't have what we need, fear that maybe we're not lovable, we're not valuable, fear of being vulnerable in pain or weakness or dependent on anybody, fear. Fear like that clouds our minds and makes us forget what we're capable of, what what we've gotten through with flying colors so many times. Fear like that robs us of peace. And that's why Jesus says in today's scene, my peace I give to you. It's the kind of peace that the world cannot give. So how do we allow the Spirit of God within us to remind us of our inner resources, to discover again and again peace that the world cannot give? Well, I think we need spiritual practices every single day. Practices like prayer. We need prayer every day. Some time of prayer every day. It can take many forms. Prayer can have words. It could be wordless. We heard in the anthem today, hear my wordless prayer, spirit. Put your ear upon my heart. Listen. We can pray in silence. 
and pray with music and pray in nature. Wherever it is, whatever form it takes, it involves opening ourselves to the presence of God, which we experience in peace, in strength, in courage, in hope, in faith, in love. All of these are ways that we experience God's presence. And I think we could use some spiritual reading, too, maybe every day. Maybe that is reading scripture. Maybe it's reading some other kind of book that helps connect you to God. And it's a book that you don't analyze, but that you savor. Savor it. Rituals help us. We're physical human beings. We need tangible things to get us connected to God sometimes. Maybe you could light a candle in the darkness at night. And remember the presence of God. Maybe you could start off the day by ringing the singing bowl the way I do on Sunday mornings to open yourself to the presence of God. Maybe at night before you go to bed, you can take out your journal and write a letter to God or list the things that you're thankful for that have happened that day. Serving others also is a way for us to move out of our isolating, fearful mind to encounter the presence of God, to encounter the presence of God in our hearts as we share our hearts with others. And being part of a community of faith helps us to remember what Jesus teaches us about receiving the Spirit, being open to God, worshiping together, fellowship together, learning together, serving together. These are all the ways that make visible God's presence, God's spirit within us and among us. We need each other. We need each other to remember that we've made it up those steps before. We really do. My friend Elaine is a great storyteller. And some of you have met her because Elaine was here nine years ago and she did her one-woman show. For goodness sake, Elaine is multi-talented. She, she has shows that she performs and she's a, she has storytelling workshops. She's an ordained minister, all kinds of things that she does. And she's especially good at telling children Bible stories. She has a way of helping children know that the power of God and the love of God and those Bible characters is also in them. But they need, as we all need, to help each other remember that. Remember that presence, that power of God within them. In fact, Elaine ends every children's message with the words, will you help me remember that? That's how she ends. And, and her book of Bible Stories for Children is called Help Me Remember. Now, Elaine has been through a lot of tough places in her life, many tough places. She was rejected by one church for coming out of the closet. She was treated unjustly by another church for a different reason. She went through a difficult divorce. She struggled to care for her mother, especially in the, the end of her mother's life and as her mother was dying, and even though her brothers were very mean in that whole situation. She struggled with the prison system when she tried to create a, a ministry for women in prison, and she eventually was able to do that. So Elaine has known struggles. She's known what it means to climb all those steps, to be there again and again, and she knows how much she needs a community of faith to help her remember the power of God within her, to listen to the Spirit within her, reminding her of the presence of the Spirit. And we need that too. We need it. In fact, when we come here on Sunday morning or during the week, we participate in an event in the life of this church, service, whatever it might be. 
one of the things that we're saying to each other, one of the things we're saying to each other is, when I am immobilized by fear, staring up those stairs as though I've never seen them in my entire life, please help me remember. Help me remember what I'm capable of. Help me remember the power of God's very spirit within me. Help me remember to listen to the voice of God within me, telling me what I'm capable of. Well, I hope that you will help me remember that when I'm gazing up those stairs. And I promise I will help you remember too.